Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and as you can see, we are in a new location. It's not undisclosed, I'll tell you about it. We are with a special guest tire, Mr. Sean Holsinger. He's the co-owner of Holsinger's Fly Shop. Sean, welcome to the show. Good to see you, Tim. Likewise, so we um, are gonna tell you a little bit more about how this video came to be in a bit, but for right now, we are at Holsinger's Fly Shop right. in East Freedom, PA, which is in central Pennsylvania, and Sean's gonna be tying one of his very own flies. It is the? Hot spot stone with a little twist. You got it. You guys are gonna love this one. Stay tuned. All right, Sean, will you just give us a quick sneak peek of the hot spot stone? Sure, this is my hot spot stone pattern. Um, it's just a really simple stone fly pattern. You can see no legs to it or anything like that. I, I found that it doesn't really need them and uh, it makes it cut down through the water quicker to get you down to the bottom. Cool, a really nice looking pattern, really clean looking tie. Uh, you ready to start tying this one? Sure thing. All right, cool. Okay, Sean, we have a clean hook in the vise. Why don't you take us away? Sure, this is a Firehole 315 in a size 12. Um, the bead I'm using on it is a tungsten bead in copper in a 3.3 millimeter bead. Okay. I'm gonna put about five or six wraps of lead on it. Main reason I give the, the lead is um, hold that bead in place a little bit better. I just like to throw a, a, small, wrap of, a small wrap of lead in there behind it and then tie it in the rest of the way with my thread. Okay, I know tires are meticulous. Does it matter the diameter of lead? Are we talking point? I use either a point one zero or a point oh one. Sorry, oh one five, sure. and uh, just I usually smaller because I don't want to overpower this. I want to keep it uh, slim and a real trim fly. So mm -hmm. next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my uh, thread the whole way back to the bend here, a little bit over the bend as you can see, and I'm going to create a ball and I'm going to create a hot spot ball mm -hmm. and. Uh, Two things it does is one A creates a hot spot on this fly, and the other thing is that it's going to do is it's going to splay the tail out on my biots here, and I make a decent sized ball and then bring my thread back up and then to finish that ball off, I like to use a little bit of Solares bone dry mm -hmm. or any um, UV kind of glue that I can get on there quickly, but this just rounds it off a little bit and uh, secures that because if you don't secure it it has a tendency to unwind and roll the thread will roll down around your yeah great tip by the way what is the thread you're using the thread i'm using is um just 140 denier fluorescent orange okay. and uh, you can use smaller if you like i just typically use 140 is just what i'm comfortable tying with all right cool and let me give a quick product placement i'm guessing most of these materials that you're using you can find at holsinger's fly shop sure we carry everything to tie this fly in the shop here at holsingersflyshop.com and uh, the next thing we're going to do is use strip goose biots for this fly i'm using a olive brown and i'm going to tie one on in, one on on each side and use about two wraps to tie it in mm -hmm. and then as you can see here too, I'm tying it where it, it turns and I always tie the turn side out so they splay away from each other. And there again, I'll make about two or three wraps, make sure that's where I want it. And then I'm just gonna wrap it back to that bead and that splays them by its out perfectly. You can see how perfect that makes the uh, tail on there. Look great. It's also nice whenever they're running through the water, it gives a little bit more movement to the fly when the, the current kind of catches that splayed tail. So that's a, that's a smart idea. And then I just finish by wrapping them up the rest of the way up the hook. Now, there's two things I can do here. I can either keep this orange thread on, which I'm going to because I like the color of it, or I can switch to another thread. And um, by switching to another thread, you're gonna change the color of the fly. I use stretch tubing from Wapsie. Um, Hairline has some nice stuff out too, but I like the stretch tubing. It's a little bit bigger. I'm tying this as a medium, medium size brown stretch tubing. Mm -hmm. And I'll tie it in yellow and black stretch tubing too. And again, change the color of your thread and it'll change the color of the fly. Mm -hmm. And all I do is I, I put it, tie it down on top, pull it a little bit tight so it thins out as you go back and then just wrap it down and I'll, I'm gonna cover it up and make a nice covered body. Try not to let too much of that brown show through it. It's not a big deal, but just try to keep it clean is all I'm doing. And then we're just gonna wrap this forward and doing it side by side and, and I'm pulling on it, giving a little bit of attention to it. 
Oh, sorry, I forgot one of my main steps to this fly. Uh -oh. What I wanted to, to add to this fly is uh, is the hot, or sorry, the flashback on it. And for the flashback, I'm going to put some mylar tinsel on, and this is just pearl mylar tinsel. And uh, I'm just going to lay that down on the top. So we're getting a variation. This is a variation of the okay. pattern that's on my YouTube channel. Okay. And. Uh, if you watch any of my YouTube videos, you'll see that I like to tie things flashy, and that's how I come up with this. I just wanted a flashy alternative. Mm -hmm. So I added this Mylar tinsel, and then to hold that Mylar tinsel down, I'm going to use a piece of extra small red wire. And I'm trying to keep limit my wraps here so I don't build it up too big, but I'm also trying to keep it smooth. You can see I got it a little bit bigger back at the back, so I'm just going to add a little bit of thread here to try to smooth it out a little bit. Now, I'm going to start wrapping this up again. Okay, part two. And I'm going to keep it side by side so none of that thread shows through. But you can see how that orange thread underneath this brown gives it a lighter brown color. If I would go with a brown underneath it, it would make it more brown. Go with a black, it'll actually turn it black. So you don't actually have to buy black stretch tubing to achieve a, brown, a black stone fly. And, uh, and then we're just going to bring it up and tie it off. Jeez, you can just tell no matter how creative you are, there are so many things you can do with that stretch tubing. Yep. The little hint I'll give to the viewers, buy clear as well and play exactly. around with it. You can have a lot of fun with that stuff. And then I'm just going to pull this tight up over the back and then tie it down tight. Just get it down there good and tight. And then I'm going to leave it hang here for a second because I want to, in case it shifts. And then I'm going to just wrap my wire around and make a nice even rib. I'm guessing you are counter ribbing this just to give it a little bit of... Just, yeah, just to give it a little extra strength to it, but... And then tie the, tie the wire off. And then we helicopter, helicopter that off. And then I'm gonna just cut the mylar off now that I got it in place where you want. You can see it goes straight down over the back mm -hmm. and gives it a nice rib there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some biots. And I've played around with my biots on what to do here. And uh, I, I started adding, originally I would use an olive brown to keep going with the flow of the brown. And I started doing a hot spot biot too. Mm -hmm. And it really draws attention to the fly. I think the contrast of the biots makes a difference on it. And I've been doing well with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of these biots and I'm going to tie them in, in orange. I use pink biots a good bit, especially on my yellow ones. <laughs> That's funny hearing you say it. I love chartreuse biots too. Yeah. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crisscross them, as you can see. And I'm going to try to get them even here. There we go. Get them even like that. And now you can see that the way they turn, they turn up. I always put that turn up so it shows off a little bit better and doesn't lay down and just blend in mm -hmm. with, with the pattern here. So just going to tie them on just shy of the length of the hook. Just lay them on there. Start out light and wrap them down tight. And then we'll trim them off. And then the last thing we're going to add to it is I'm going to put some dubbing on it. For the dubbing, I like to do a dubbing loop. Uh, it gives me a more buggy look. So I'm going to do a dubbing loop. And the, the uh, dubbing we're using is SLF in the pattern blends in uh, Fox Squirrel, or sorry, Red Squirrel uh, abdomen color. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take much of this, just a little bit. And I like to put my finger in between the dubbing loop to spread it out a little bit. And then we just place that in between your dubbing loop. And then pull your finger out so it pinches down. Give it a good twist. And then we're just going to dub a collar on here. And as I'm dubbing this collar on, I'm peeling them fibers back so they lay back over natural. It only takes you about three wraps for this small fly. And we tie it off. And then using this orange thread, it allows us to create a hot spot collar at the front, hence the name, the hot spot stone. I think there's like nine hot spots in this fly, Sean. There is. There's a lot of hot spots, but that's my style of tying. If you if you follow me on any of my social media, you'll see there's a lot of flash and hot spots. So 
I like to call them flash and bang style flies. Yeah. And um, there it is. Cool. Great tie, Sean. Uh, loved it. Um, so many different things going on there. Definitely lots of different techniques uh, for the viewers to check out. So um, go back, watch that one one more time. Can you give us a quick 360 of the fly? Sure thing. Cool. Killer job. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, let's change the camera angle. Uh, let's pick your brain just a little bit more about this fly and about a few other things, okay? Sure thing. Well, I am sure you're the same as me. Sean just did an awesome job tying that pattern. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Now I kind of get to take a break. I'm going to pick his brain just a little bit and just learn a little bit more about this hotspot stone. So Sean, for starters, can you tell us, you mentioned in the beginning, this is a variation from the one that you have on your YouTube channel. Right. Can you explain the differences? Um, the one I have on my YouTube channel, I don't use the Mylar flashback on it or the rib. Um, when I started tying this, this pattern in particular, I, uh, I saw it from a post from Joe Mathis from Firehole Hooks. He put a, a caddis style pattern on it and I looked at it and I thought, well, that's very similar to what, how I tie my stones. So I wanted to do a little twist and make a stone fly out of it. And, uh, I did that and I fished it for a while, caught a lot of fish on it, and uh, so I, me being me, liking things flashy, I decided to add the Mylar tinsel to the back. Perfect, perfect. And I think you're probably in the same school of thought as me. If they don't have these exact materials, it doesn't have to be like you have to have this size and this thing. There's a little bit of room for... Totally. Perfect. Well, I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Uh, and I'm really happy that we're able to share a variation because right. I love to say the tires out there vary the patterns, make it a little exactly. bit different than the guy that you're fishing next to just because yep. you have a, that ability to, to change it up as a tire. Not only that, I'll add that to the stonefly in my area may not look like the stonefly in your area. It could be a different color variation. And one of the great things about this pattern, why I like to tie it is, is I'll tie this in multiple different colors by just changing the thread underneath the tubing on it. I'll use mm -hmm. three different colors of thread under the yellow tubing and I'll have four different flies Jeez, out of it. That's so. an easy change. Yes. Yeah. Oh, cool. Let's jump. I heard you talk about water. Let's go down that direction. How do you sure. like to fish this fly? What recommendations do you have for everybody? Um, most of the area that I fish around here is, is small streams. I don't I don't fish like the little jay that much. I don't get on the bigger rivers. I like the smaller rivers because I can I can fish them hard and catch a lot of fish. So I'm fishing a lot of pockets, you know, behind rocks, fast water. Uh, we've done real well on this last week, fishing a really fast run, and was just pulling the fish out with it. Cool. So just get it on the bottom. It's a Euro nymph style pattern. There's you know, I created it so there's not much drag on it, so it sinks to the bottom quick. All right, cool. The one recommendation I'll, I'll kind of throw out there in regards to fishing it. For those of you fishing stoneflies, I heard Sean say Euronymph, those tight line tactics, they all work really well. But with stoneflies in particular, once you finish your drift, let it just swing a little bit towards yep. shore because as these stoneflies are starting their emergence, they crawl up towards the shore. Right. And if it looks like it's escaping from the fish, sometimes you'll get a grab in that situation you would least expect it. It almost feels like you're doing something wrong. You're making a mistake, but I totally agree. I fish pretty much in my Euro nymph, I always fish the whole way through the swing on pretty much everything I fish because even if I'm not fishing a stonefly, usually my top fly is close to an emerger style fly. So you get that natural drift towards the top. Perfect. Uh, before we move on, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your stonefly and the time? Um, not really, other than, you know, if you catch me at shows or you see me on my YouTube channel, I have a whole uh, playlist devoted to stoneflies. I love tying them. If you see me at, st at shows, like I said, you're going to see me tying a stonefly most likely. And uh, I've had many variations, but one thing, through my variations, I've, I started out simple old school style flies and then me being me like to experiment and try different things and and then evolved into a really intricate shallow water flies that you don't want to lose and now i'm back to the simple stuff and the simple stuff catches fish perfect that's glad i'm really glad to hear all that well thanks for kind of explaining all that stuff for sure. us Sean, let's switch gears just a little bit. We're recording this at Holsinger's Fly Shop. Could you tell us a little bit about it? What's this around? Give us some reasons to come here. Sure. Holsinger's Fly Shop is a, it's a family owned business. My dad runs the shop during the day. Um, he's the one that you're going to see in the shop most of the time because I work a full time job and do some guiding on the side. So I'm hit or miss here at the shop. But uh, stop in and see him. He can answer all your questions. He's been fishing just as long as I have and, and knows his stuff. Um, the shop is located in Central Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania and we're centrally located in between two of the major streams in our area um, like the Little Jay and Spruce Creek area and Yellow Creek in Bedford County which is 
two uh, two really destination kind of spots. They are. They're excellent. Yes, they're excellent. They're excellent. But but we are located in between them two, and there is a ton of fishing in between them two that's often overlooked by the guys that's just coming into town because that's what they know from reading the books and stuff like that. From the shop here, I can name six or seven streams offhand that's not in any books that you want to be fishing on, but. You, you know, you want to get there. local secrets. And I'll jump in and say, I have fished six or seven of those streams. I've been able to fish with your dad, Ron, as well. Yeah. Great guy to fish with. We had a blast. We have not been able to connect yet. yet. We are going to fish together <laughs> soon. Right. I, I promise you, hopefully by the time this video comes out, we have fished. <laughs> let's jump and let's kind of stick with the shop. But there's sure. this thing that the shop does. It's a Facebook group called Bugs and Beards. Bugs and Can Beards. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, one of our friends that comes into the shop all the time, Pat Smith, he's big on the... He's our research and development guy, we call him here at the <laughs> shop. He's the one that's always on Facebook finding out what the new product is, you know, telling us we need to, to carry this because it's going to be the next big thing, and he's usually right on. Mm -hmm. Well, Pat and I both have beards, so we kind of come up with Bugs and Beards is the name of our group, and we just wanted a way for to, to share stuff and a, a more informal kind of thing, and it's been a great thing. It's uh, It's been a lot of fun. Um, we get to... We get to share stuff on a more intimate level than me just putting it out there on Holsinger's Fly Shop or something like that. And we get a lot of discussion from it. We get a lot more discussion from the Bugs and Beards type of group than I do from, say, my Holsinger's Fly Shop page because the page, the Holsinger's Fly Shop is business and this is fun and people like fun more than they like business. Yeah, they do. And for those of you not on Facebook yet, my selling point of, and if you don't want to get on it, you can just ignore me for the next 30 seconds. But what's really nice is there's these things called Facebook groups, yeah. and that's what Bugs and Beards is. Yep. And you can be invited into some, you can just join some publicly. But what's nice about it, as Sean's saying, it's a smaller group of people. So Facebook can reach most of the globe. However, yeah. the group is just for those who are involved in it. And I'm a part of that group. And it's neat because there are so many people from this area that will post pictures of fish they've yeah. caught, just pictures of flies. You can tell there's really a strong collaboration from that group, but then there's others that are from nowhere in this area. Oh, for and sure. And it's neat to kind of see how that whole system works. Yeah, and it's neat to, it's, it's neat to share on there because like I said, it's, it, it's a non-invasive type of group. If you want to join, just click on the thing and join. And it's all, the other great thing about groups is when I post something on, fa on my Facebook page, it goes out to everybody. Well, this is just the group and the group is there for a reason. They all have the, a like interest. And that's the great thing about groups over the Facebook pages. You're all there for the same reasons. Perfect. You also post in that group about when you have like not meetings, but just right. kind of collaborations in the shop. I've not made it to one of those yet. Sure. When do those take place? We do them every other Thursday. Um, and we just we just all get together, hang out, drink some coffee, tie flies, you know, bring your vice. If you don't want to tie, if you don't feel t comfortable tying in front of other, just hang out because you're going to learn something from the guys that are in the shop. We have a great mix of guys, some old school guys tying their old wet flies and stuff mm -hmm. like that to, yeah. to the new competition guys and some of the young up and coming competition guys are here regular, like uh, Chase Crater, he's here all the time and he, he's showing us his patterns that he's cool. hammering fish on. Cool. And uh, so it's just a lot of fun because we get to learn from each other and see what's working at the time and, and just learn new techniques and patterns. Cool. And that's really what this is all about. And to share with all of you how this video even came to be, Sean and I were tying at a fly tying event. And while we were there, we just started talking about YouTube and what works for him and what works for me. And we right. decided, hey, we're only a couple hours apart. Let's get together, do a little collaboration. So I'm featuring sure. him on my channel. He's going to feature me on his. We're going to tie that one. So we're really looking forward to continuing this relationship. Right. And again, that's really what this is all about. Just kind of pushing the envelope at times, learning new techniques, and just sharing with others. Uh, Sean, most importantly, if they have questions for you, what are some ways you'd like them to reach out? Sure, you can contact us at, uh, at the shop, at contact us at Holsinger's Fly Shop if you have a question. Um, like I said, Dad's here all the time. He's answering those emails. If you want to contact me personally, you can reach out to me at holsingersflyshop at gmail.com. Uh, that's where I have my YouTube questions and stuff go to, but you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and my YouTube channel. Perfect. That sounds great. There's lots of ways to reach out. Sure. Um, by all means, please do so. 
Uh, Sean just did a great job tying. Sean, I have to say once again, thank you so much. Oh, thank I really you, appreciate it. We look forward to having you on again in the future. Sure. Now I'll kind of shift gears just a hair. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, you can check them out on my website, which is troutandfeather.com. You can go to mine after you check out Holsinger's. Once you're on mine, click fly tying videos and guest tires, and you'll see all the other tires that I've featured on my channel over the years. Uh, you can also find Trout and Feather on Facebook and Instagram, all that stuff. And as I always say, I'd love to connect with you in any way that works for all of you. Well, one more time, Sean, thank you again. Thanks a lot, Tim. Great job. I hope all of you really enjoyed watching Sean Ty's Hot Spot stone and we'll see all of you soon.